Welcome to another video and today I'm going to be talking about white balance in wildlife photography. So some of you out there will know how to use this already. If you're not too sure then firstly I'm going to explain what it is. I'm going to keep it fairly simple for this video. I might make another video in more depth. Well basically white balance is colour temperature and we can measure this. It's really a measurement of how the colour looks from kind of orangey yellow at one end of the scale through to bluer at the other end of the scale. And that measurement is in Kelvin. So that is your colour temperature measured in Kelvin K. And at either end of that scale, we can also refer to the colours as warmer colours or bluer colours. So to give you an idea of different colour temperatures, if we looked at candlelight, which is a really orangey yellow light, that would be at the warm end of the spectrum. That would probably be around 1800 Kelvin. Tungsten light, the light bulbs that are in most houses, they would probably be around 3200 Kelvin. Fluorescent light is around 4000 Kelvin. These are, you know, estimates, but they're fairly good. And then into daylight, that's going to range a little bit depending on how sunny it is, how much cloud there is. So if you're looking at bright, bright sunshine in the middle of the day, you're probably looking around 5,500 Kelvin. And then cloudy conditions, maybe 6,000 to 6,500 Kelvin. So you've got a bit of a range there throughout the daylight hours. And then deep, deep shade will be probably around 7,000 Kelvin. And then if we go beyond that, uh, into the blue hour, for example, then that's going to be even higher Kelvin, maybe 8,000 or more. With wildlife photography, the likelihood is you're not going to be shooting under tungsten lighting or fluorescent lighting or anything like that. I'd say probably at least 90% of the time, you're going to be photographing outside in natural daylight conditions. So there's a little bit less to think about in terms of white balance, specifically for wildlife, I think. And of course, with wildlife photography, you simply might not have time given the subject, you might not have time to change the white balance even if you wanted to. Our eyes do not see in the same way as the camera does. So when we're looking at a scene, if there is some light reflecting back, warmer or cooler, then our brain pretty much cancels it out and we don't really notice. But the camera can't do that. So the camera has to be told what to do in order to correct it. And what we're really talking about here is the whites. So we're trying to get the white balance so that the whites look nice and neutral and nice and clean. Now there's different ways you can do that. We could try auto white balance in the hope that the camera is going to get it right every time and sometimes it will but there are situations where it will definitely get it wrong. The other options are to look at the different white balance symbols that you've probably got on your camera for outside situations. They include the daylight sometimes called sunny setting, uh, the cloudy setting and the shade setting. So they're going to be the main ones for outdoor shooting. The other option that some cameras have for white balance is the Kelvin setting. So if you've got that, you'll see a K. And if you go into that, you can basically adjust the color temperature. So rather than the symbols, which are kind of an estimate of the color temperature, Kelvin, you can actually set the color temperature exactly as you want it. So what I want to do now is something practical to change the white balance in the field so you can see how it's working. So today I've enlisted the help of a model. So I was going to call him but I think that might be copyrighted or something. So we're going to call him Jeff. Now Jeff's really good. Bear with me, it's going to be worth it, I promise. Jeff's really good because he's got some nice clean whites on there and that's going to show up the difference in white balance really, really well. So the lighting conditions we've got at the moment are very, very cloudy, blanket cloud, nice and even. So what I'm going to do, we want to try and match the colour temperature in the camera to the colour temperature that's hitting the subject. So under the cloudy sky, I'm just going to go for the cloudy setting. So I'm going to select my symbol, where white balance, and I'm going to put it onto the cloudy setting. On my camera, it says approximately 6,000 Kelvin. That's just an estimate. And we're going to take a shot with that. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. Now, we're going to vary it a little bit. So rather than match the colour temperature to the conditions, to the subject, I'm just going to vary it a bit either side. So I'm going to now choose the daylight setting, which is sunshine. I'd like to say sunny or daylight. So we're going to go to the, the sunshine symbol. Select that one, take that. 
okay yeah I can see a slight difference on that uh, now what I'm going to try is the shady setting uh, this is for really really deep shade and this will probably make it warmer so we're going to go into there's the shade on my camera it says approximately 7000 Kelvin select that one And then what we're going to do is we're going to try one on auto white balance to see how accurate the camera gets it. So into here, AWB, auto white balance. Okay, these are actually all looking fairly similar, but you'll see a slight difference. So we can see the first image there taken on cloudy, trying to match the colour temperature in the camera to the colour temperature outside, which should give us a neutral look. And it does look really, really neutral to my eye. Um, it doesn't look particularly cool or warm to me. It looks pretty accurate. The next shot was the daylight setting, the sunshine setting. Now I'd expect that to look a bit cooler. And you can see it does look slightly cooler. Not massively, but a little bit. And then the next image was with shade. And you can see there definitely, definitely looks a lot warmer with the shade setting. Now the auto white balance, just out of interest, the auto white balance is looking quite similar to the sunny setting, I think. Now you might have noticed that the, the effect the camera is giving seems to be the opposite, the opposite Kelvin number to what I talked about earlier on. So earlier in the video we were talking about how a warmer colour is a lower Kelvin number and a bluer colour is a higher Kelvin number. Now the reason that this seems kind of opposite on the camera, and it took me a while to get my head around it, but the reason it might seem opposite is because the camera is basically trying to correct um, that colour temperature that it's looking at. So basically if you're shooting in very orangey yellow light then the camera is going to kind of add some blue to try and correct that to bring it back to neutral. If you're shooting in blue hour for example the camera is going to try and make it uh, kind of add some orangey yellow again to try and correct it to bring it back to neutral. So the camera is really just trying to correct what it's seeing to give those neutral whites. If that is really confusing you, don't worry too much about it. I would just try and keep it simple for wildlife photography. And basically, if you're shooting on the sunny daylight setting for white balance, that's gonna make your pictures just look a little cooler, a little bluer. If you're shooting more on cloudy or shade, then it's gonna make them more orange yellow, more warm. In terms of wildlife photography, are you gonna have time to change the white balance? And what if the subject moves, for example, from outside in the sun into the shade? Uh, are you gonna be able to change it quickly? Probably not. So again, going back to the auto white balance, that's where that can come in. However, there are situations where that can be a problem. And a lot of the time, it can be pretty accurate. But if you take this example of a red deer stag from a few years ago, now I actually shot this on the daylight sunny white balance setting and the colors look fairly accurate. Now I thought I'd just try afterwards uh, in a raw file just to change the white balance and see what happened. So I changed it to auto white balance and this is what happened. And it just looks, to me, just looks absolutely horrible. Um, it just looks really blue to my eye and all the color vibrance just seems to have gone and that's because for auto white balance the camera can struggle if there isn't a lot of different tones and i think if there aren't whites in there as well the good news is that if you're shooting in raw you will be able to change your white balance afterwards if you're shooting in jpeg then i don't think you'll be able to do this so if you're really concerned about the white balance and you're not sure if you can get it right at the time if you shoot in raw then you can change it afterwards now you might be wondering what I personally do with my white balance or you might be thinking this video has gone on for a really long time. Anyway, what, what I used to do, uh, first of all I used auto white balance and I just found the results more inconsistent but it was on a much older camera so I'm sure it was nowhere near as good as it is these days. Um, I then went to use the daylight sunny setting for white balance and I've used that for a long time and I liked that, seems to be fairly consistent to my eye. Then a friend of mine said, try setting the color temperature and just leaving it at that all the time. So that's what I did was to set the color temperature Kelvin to 5,300. Um, and I just found ever since it just, to my eye, seems to give really consistent results and consistent colors. I certainly felt that way, never really been too concerned about it. Now, 
researching for making this video, what I did was actually go through a lot of my images and change the white balance on the RAW file just to see the effect. And what I found is that I've now decided to my eye, a lot of the images look too blue. They look too cool and I think they could be warmer. So I'm actually gonna change it now. I am going to, I'm gonna increase the color temperature a bit maybe to 5600 something like that and see how it looks i think it's just going to be a bit better um i'm also going to look at trying to change the color temperature in different situations so if it is cloudy and consistently cloudy then i'm going to go for the cloudy setting or set it around 6000 maybe and just see how that goes but i think generally i'm going to try and warm my images and it's funny until you actually compare you can't really see the difference again because i think your eye kind of your eye and your brain kind of cancels it out and it's harder to see but when you actually change things and compare one to the other you start to see a difference that you didn't notice before so what should you do how should you set the white balance on your camera i'm aware there's a lot of information in this video well basically i would say try the auto white balance first try that and see how you go and if you're getting consistent results a lot of the time then maybe you just stick with that and you don't need to change it or the other option is to pretty much do what i did is to select a color temperature. So go into Kelvin and select a color temperature for daylight in that daylight range, probably 5,000 to 6,000, and select it for more for your preference, whether you tend to prefer the slightly cooler colors or the slightly warmer colors. So you could kind of use that, generally speaking, and when you don't have time to change things, if you have time and the conditions are really consistent, then consider changing it using one of the symbols or the color temperature to match the conditions that you're photographing in. So I might make a second video if you want me to do that please let me know in the comments box below if you'd like to see another video even a bit more depth and more reasons as to why you should change the white balance for your own personal taste and changing the mood well i hope that's been useful and um, it's been quite a long video this one i've no idea how long it is but i'm sure it'll be longer than the usual seven minutes thanks so much for watching do subscribe if you're not but if you are subscribed make sure you click the notification icon uh, thing to be notified and i'll see you next time